This is a, a racehorse foot that has the shoe on. And as you can see, this is the frog, central sulcus here. This is the collateral sulcus here. And you see this frog here, it's been, it's narrow and smooth. It's because it's been trimmed. That's why you, when you see these flat edges here, this has been trimmed. This, between the collateral sulcus and the tip of the uh, frog, the apex, this should actually be swollen and enlarged because that means it'll be on the ground and there'll be uh, a support structure. People who trim the feet such they actually remove part of the bars all the way around here and they actually neaten this, this area of the foot can no longer be on the ground. It doesn't touch, especially when you, when you clean the foot out and put them on a hard surface. And so it means that the load of the foot is distributed around the shoe, the peripheral part of the foot in this case, where the shoe is. This is the inside of the foot where you can actually see this is the, the roof of the collateral sulcus, which is here. This is the frog stay. This is where the frog is here. The hoof actually supports the coffin bone through this region right here. This is actually a, a, a flattened area here, and it's directly underneath this thickest part of the coffin bone. The distance between this part of the coffin bone and this area here is a fraction of a millimeter compared to the peripheral parts of the coffin bone and foot. So it actually is being supported there. It should be. Be supported there. It should be. Yeah. Everyone says, believes that the, they always call it the, uh, the natural arch is the strongest structure. And that is true. But there is a qualifying point is that the arch bridge, the strongest brick in the natural arch bridge is the one that's on the ground because that has to support all the weight of the arch. In the horse is just reverse. You have this arch that's going through here. The very part that's on the ground here, the support, is going to be the thinnest part of the bone. The implications of this is there's, if, if you load the foot peripherally, this is where you're going to, the very thin bone is there. This is going to be the most susceptible to problems, and that is clinically, we call it pedal osteitis. And the frequent, frequent fracturing of the edges of the bone, it's very common. But you notice, to go one step further, this is the underside of the bone. This area here and here, that is the thickest part of the bone. And that is where the bone uh, should be supported from the hoof, my belief. And you'll see that it's going to be directly under the roof of the collateral sulcus. So by removing a lot of the bars, removing a lot of the frog, you no longer have support through here. So you have to support the foot some other way. Many people believe that the horse's hoof is being loaded by the hoof wall. When the foot is loaded peripherally, and I hear I'm talking about the hoof wall, all of the weight is on that hoof wall, which means it's actually suspending the coffin bone from the hoof wall, from the tissue between the coffin bone and the hoof. That's what is actually suspending the coffin bone. My belief is the hoof should only su uh, support 5 to 20 percent of the horse's weight. And as a result of that, it means the other 95 to 80 percent of the weight should be somehow supported by the solar structures. And here we're talking uh, conformable surface, if they have a dirt plug, ground surface, and that sort of stuff. It's actually going to support these structures and fill up that collateral sulcus, which then will support this part of the coffin bone. That's what's going to be the supporting structure. So is the coffin bone really shouldn't be suspended from the, the hoof wall 100% of the weight. Basically what it is, why everyone believes that the coffin bone is suspended inside the hoof wall is it's one from severe laminitic cases where the horse develops laminitis and so the tissues between the coffin bone and the hoof become uh, diseased and no longer can support itself, both all the connective tissue and blood vessels in that. So it appears as though the coffin bone comes through the bottom of the horse's foot through the sole. But what is actually happening the hoof is moving up the leg. It's like a bell boots. The other thing is we've all been believed that both trimmers, veterinarians, and farriers, that there's a large surface area of the lamina, which there is. And as a result of that, that is what is suspending the coffin bone. But it has to do with how the foot is actually being trimmed. 
if you trim the foot such that the hoof wall is below the coffin bone, yes, the coffin bone will be suspended by the hoof wall. But if you trim the foot so there's minimal amount of weight load on the hoof wall, that will not occur, and most of the weight will be on the solar surface of the, for the foot. I've looked at a lot of feet, and I see a lot of pathology in these horses' feet, uh, especially the coffin bones, because we're trimming the foot such that the hoof wall is the loading structure. And as a result of that, the, the foot is adapting, the coffin bone is adapting to try to s minimize the stresses on these tissues inside the hoof. And so the connective tissue is actually uh, trying to attach itself to the coffin bone itself. In other mammalian species, the nail is not the primary loading structure. We're talking about ruminants, camelids, and the like. They all walk on some sort of solar pad than what you have there. In the horse, you have a more keratinized solar pad, which you see here, but you have a very large digital cushion, and which contains a lot of ligaments, and it's laced with a lot of vessels. And the vessels, when the foot is being loaded, they become engorged with blood vessels, but they also are there to remove the energy of impact, the vibration energy that gets that out of the foot. If you watch these horses that are barefoot in the uh, paddocks or even the wintertime, you actually see that the hoof is not the loading structure. You can actually take a small ruler and go underneath the hoof wall all the way around, but the weight is on the, uh, the solar parts of the foot. And we've actually done experiments where we've taken horses from an arena. As soon as they come off the arena, we make an imprint, and you make that imprint, and then you clean the dirt plug out, and all of a sudden you realize that where they were loaded on the arena was inside the, where the hoof wall is. From that point further, we started to look at the tissues on the inside of the foot, and most people have read where the coffin bone does not have a periosteum. That is dependent on how the foot is loaded. If you load the foot from the hoof wall, the connective tissue overlying the coffin bone, which is called periosteum, changes its orientation. The fibers change their orientation, so they're no longer parallel to the coffin bone. If you load the sole surface, the, the periosteum can be present in the horses in their 20s because they'll put most of the weight on the solar surface of the foot. Those things together is why I believe that the coffin bone wants to be loaded from the sole ground surface as opposed from the hoof wall, the majority of its weight.